Welcome again to MedCrime. In today's tutorial, we shall be looking at thyroid diseases, specifically thyroid nodules in neoplasms. So by the end of this tutorial, we shall cover the history and physical examination of patients with thyroid pathologies, understand which patients require surgery and appropriate surgical timing for them, and then describe the process of evaluation and working up of various thyroid pathologies. Let's start with a case presentation to guide us in our discussion. A 30-year-old female patient is referred to a head and neck clinic for evaluation of a thyroid nodule. The patient reports this nodule was found incidentally while she was getting ready for work one morning. She went to her primary care practitioner who ordered a thyroid ultrasound that demonstrated a 2.5 cm nodule in the right lobe of the thyroid. After doing a history and physical examination on this patient, what do you consider first for this patient? Is it a thyroid function test, CT scan of the neck, MRI of the neck, radioactive iodide uptake scan or all of the above? The correct answer is a thyroid function test. It is important first to establish the patient's thyroid function and this will help you determine if the non-thyroid nodule is hyperfunctioning, hypofunctioning, or non-functioning. And at this point, you should also obtain a fine needle aspiration with ultrasound guidance to obtain cells for cytopathology studies, which will then help you determine if the nodule is either benign or malignant in nature. Some of the important factors or points to consider in patient history are family history of thyroid disease or thyroid cancers, that is a familial syndrome, for example, multiple endocrine neoplasias, a personal history of radiation to the head or the neck because radiations may increase risk of thyroid cancers, and also assess for hoarseness of sound, shortness of breath, and difficulty in swallowing, for these are compressive symptoms of a thyroid goiter. Our patient also reports her voice seems to have become slightly more husky. She recalls only occasional discomfort with sensation that something is pushing in. She denies shortness of breath, denies family history of thyroid cancers, and also denies personal history of radiation therapy or thyroid or any other type of cancer. So what components of the physical examination are critical for this patient? Number one, you need to do a full head and neck examination to look for any lumps or bumps. You palpate for lymphadenopathies, palpate the thyroid for nodularity, firmness or hard masses, and also do a fiber optical electroringoscopy to evaluate the vocal cord function. So on physical examination of our patient, you palpate a grossly enlarged thyroid gland with a 2 cm dominant nodule on the right thyroid lobe. And on fiber optic examination, you discover a symmetrical bilateral vocal cord abduction upon inspiration shown in this image here. And the patient is then sent for labs as well as fine needle aspiration. She returns to the clinic the following week with a FNA report leading that follicular cells cannot do out follicular neoplasm. Is surgery indicated for your patient at this time? The correct answer is yes. Surgery is indicated for this patient. Follicular cells on FNA can be a benign finding or may indicate a follicular carcinomas. And follicular carcinoma cannot generally be diagnosed solely on fine needle aspiration because even the normal thyroid gland contains follicular cells. So you need to perform at least hemithyroidectomy for tissue diagnosis. And the tissue is taken at the time of surgery for pathological examination to evaluate for extracapsular extension, lymphovascular inversion, or metastasis. Therefore, in the case that follicular neoplasm is suspected based on history and presentation and fine needle aspiration results, the patient should be taken to surgery for pathologic diagnosis, biopsy, and treatment. What are the indications for thyroidectomy? A thyroidectomy is a surgical removal of the thyroid gland either in whole or a part of it. 
Some of the indications for this procedure are hyperthyroidism, specifically Graves' disease that is not responsive to medical therapy and has ophthalmic symptoms, for example, exophthalmosis. Malignancy, the disease are confirmed or high suspicion based on the history or fine needle inspiration. Goiter, which has compressive symptoms and large thyroid nodules that's more than 2 cm and unable to be adequately supported by FNA. So what are the causes of thyroid nodules? The cause of thyroid nodules can be either benign or malignant. And for the benign causes, we have benign thyroid cysts, colloid nodules, multinodular goiters. And for malignant cases, we have papillary carcinomas, follicular carcinoma like heart cell tumors, medullary thyroid carcinomas, and a plastic carcinoma and lymphoma of the thyroid. So, the tests and investigation that we need to do at this patient are complete blood count, blood chemistry, thyroid function levels to assess the thyroid stimulating hormone and free T4 levels, parathyroid hormones, coagulation studies, fine needle aspiration of the thyroid with or without ultrasound guidance, and a CT scan of the neck for surgical planning if it's appropriate. And also we need to do a thyroid ultrasound and a CT scan of the neck for also surgical planning. For our patient, we had a CT scan that demonstrates a large right thyroid mass causing tracheal deviation to the left and a large thyroid mass predominantly affecting the right lobe of the thyroid gland. What is the treatment for these thyroid nodules and thyroid tumors? The treatment can be classified into either medical or surgical management. And in medical management, we involve endocrinologists to assist in the management. The thyroid hormone replacement can be done for hypothyroidism. And in case of hyperthyroidism, we do thyroid suppression. We do radioiodide therapy for medical thyroid ablation and observation for thyroid modules. If the medical management fails, that's when we move next to the surgical management and also and also malignancy or concerns for malignant potential can necessitate surgeries. And lastly, we have symptomatic management, either the patient is having compression symptoms, you cannot opt for surgery. And post-surgical therapy, we use radioactive iodine ablation for any residual malignancies, thyroid hormone replacement after total thyroidectomy, and calcium replacement after surgery to the thyroid or parathyroid bed. We also need to ensure this patient has a prompt endocrinology follow-up so that to assist in titrating level thyroxine levels and doses and help manage long-term atrogenic hypothyroidism that may arise. What are the complications of thyroidectomy? Complications of thyroidectomy can be classified into either intraoperative complications or postoperative complications. Intraoperatively, one of the main major complications is bleeding because of a damage to the arteries and veins of the neck. And postoperatively, we may have injury to the current laryngeal nerve, either unilaterally or bilaterally. We can also have bleeding because of an expanding hematoma that can cause compression, shortness of breath in these patients. And if a patient develops expanding neck hematoma postoperatively, we need to immediately open the sutures to evacuate the clot and return the patient to operating room to explore and stop the bleeding. And these patients are also prone to developing hypocalcemia after removal or injury to the parathyroid glands or their blood supply. So some of the second points that you take from this presentation is that you always obtain thyroid function tests as part of the initial workup in patients with thyroid pathologies. You need to perform a full head and neck examination in these patients and also thyroid nodules should undergo FNA for cytopathology studies.